Many companies and organizations are building data lakes to break down silos and unlock more value from their data. But how can we build data lakes without having to manage any servers? What AWS services can we leverage in order to build it? Hi, I'm Adriano and this video is about what services you need to know about in order to build a serverless data lake on AWS. I'll be discussing the services and the various components in order to bring your data lake together, which include data ingestion, data storage, transformation, data cataloging, and analytics. A data lake is a central repository that allows you to store your structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data at any scale. When I mean building a serverless data lake, I'm referring to you as a client not having to manage any servers yourself to build the lake. Sure, there might be servers under the hood managed by Amazon to support these AWS services, but they are abstracted away from you and you don't have to worry about managing them yourself. Aside from this benefit of not having to manage servers, you only pay for what you use and this architecture scales as your data grows. Now there are a ton of good videos out there that talk about the benefits and particular use cases data lakes can solve, so this video is really going to focus on the particular AWS services that make up this architecture. So the data source layer is a collection of sources that can be outside of the AWS ecosystem that you want to bring into your data lake. They can also already exist in AWS such as a production RDS database that supports an application, a NoSQL database such as DynamoDB, or a data stream such as Kinesis data streams. This is ultimately the data you want to integrate into your data lake. Now the first component of our serverless data lake is data ingestion. This component is responsible for bringing our data into our data lake. There are two main categories of the type of data ingestion, which is batch ingestion and streaming ingestion. Batch ingestion is leveraged when you want to bring in a lot of data at once or on a particular schedule. This would be a good use case for AWS Glue to perform this. You only have to pay for the data processing units DPU you use for your job, and you don't have to worry about managing the services after the job is complete. AWS Glue provides both visual and code-based interfaces to make data integration easier. Glue leverages Spark so it can process your data in parallel across multiple machines. Now a lot of people don't know this, but you can actually run Python scripts without Spark in AWS Glue if you don't need the power of a cluster to process your data. Now if your data is coming from a data stream and you want to load it in near real time into a data lake, Amazon Kinesis Firehose is a good use case. Data can be ingested by Kinesis Firehose with a direct put from AWS IoT, CloudWatch logs, or CloudWatch events, or even a Kinesis data stream. It automatically scales to match your throughput of your data and requires no ongoing administration. You only pay for the data you transmit through the service. You can also compress, transform, and encrypt your data before loading it into a data lake. You can set the buffer interval from 60 seconds to 900 seconds and a buffer size from 1 to 128 megabytes for the output file. So the next component of our data lake is storage. We would use AWS S3 to store all our files that we have ingested from our data source layer. Now it's generally good practice to land your data in a data lake as raw as possible. Data is not quite ready for consumption for analysis in the raw zone, however it may still provide value to data scientists. A good practice is to ingest all the data from a source since storage is cheap in S3 and perhaps a use case develops later on for a particular column that perhaps you didn't see value for at the time. So now that our data is in the raw zone, at this point we probably want to optimize the storage format in S3 for querying or clean up our data columns, or perhaps deduplicate some of our data that was landed from our data sources. So to do this, we can turn back to our AWS Glue service. If our data is small enough, you can even leverage AWS Lambda to process your data as well. Just be aware how much processing time your data will take and how much memory it may need because Lambda is not meant for processing big data in a single Lambda. Now if you have no coding experience and want to develop your transformation logic without writing any code, another serverless option is using AWS Glue Data Brew. Launched in November 2020, you can choose from over 250 pre-built transformations to automate data preparation tasks, all without needing to write any code. So after we finish processing our data, our process data can be written back to S3 in the process zone, which is just another S3 bucket. Now depending on your use cases, you may have additional zones in your data lake depending on how much processing you may want to do on your data for a particular use case, such as a curated zone or a consumer zone if you wanted to make your data consumer ready. I'll include a link in the description below for more information on this topic. Now that we got our data in various zones in our data lake, we need a way to know where all our data is and what the data set schemas are so we can keep track of all our data we worked hard to process. We don't want our data lake to become a data swamp. Well, within the AWS Glue service, we can use Glue crawlers to discover the data we have in our various S3 buckets and write this information to AWS Glue Catalog. 
Now you can populate this data sets in the data catalog directly through the console or code as well, but glue crawlers make it easy to discover all of this for us with no development time needed. So when your data is crawled, the metadata is written to AWS glue catalog, which keeps track of where your data sets are in regards to S3 bucket and object location, the file classification of your data set and schema information about your data set. Great, so now that our data is formatted for analysis, how can we actually get business insights from all of this data that we have ingested, stored, transformed, and cataloged in a serverless way? This is where we can use Amazon Athena. Amazon Athena is our interactive query service that makes it easy to analyze data directly in our data lake. Since the dataset was documented in the AWS Glue catalog, using SQL we can query this data serverlessly and only pay for the amount of records you query. As of making this video, it costs $5 for each terabyte scanned. Now if you have chosen an optimized storage format and implemented partitions on your data lake, you can significantly reduce data costs and optimize performance. If you wanted to present your analysis in the form of interactive dashboards without having to manage servers, Amazon QuickSight is the service to use. Amazon QuickSight can query your data in the data lake through Amazon Athena. Amazon QuickSight dashboards can be accessed from any device and seamlessly embed into your application, portals, and websites. QuickSights also have the ability to do machine learning powered insights, so you don't need to be a machine learning specialist to take advantage of ML algorithms. Sometimes data processing jobs may be rather complex with multiple glue jobs that need to be triggered in a specific order for it to be completed. So how can we do this serverlessly? Well, if you've developed your jobs already using AWS Glue, you can use AWS Glue workflows to create and visualize complex extract, transform, and load activities, including multiple crawlers, jobs, and triggers. Each workflow manages the execution and monitoring of each of your jobs and crawlers. As a workflow runs each component, it records execution progress and status. In the AWS Glue console, you can see a visual representation of a workflow as a graph. Now, if you've developed your data ETL jobs leveraging Lambda and perhaps a mix of other AWS services, AWS Step Functions would be the service you want to use. AWS Step Functions have a strong integration with AWS Compute Services, Database Services, Messaging Services, and Data and Analytics Services, and also APIs. You define your workflow as a state machine, which transforms complex code into easy to understand statements and diagrams. AWS Step Functions maintains the state of your application during execution, including tracking of what step of execution it's in and storing data that is moving between the steps of your workflow. Now I know none of us here make any errors when developing our data pipelines, but if you happen to have any errors while developing or in production and you want to review it or simply want to review the logs that have been generated by any of these AWS services, all of these services I mentioned to build our serverless data lake are also natively connected to AWS CloudWatch, so you would be able to collect, access, and analyze logs from any data pipeline in CloudWatch. Great, so now we understand what AWS services we can use to build our serverless data lake. Is there any way to cut down the time to build some of these data processing jobs? If you work with a large enterprise with multiple teams having access to your AWS account, perhaps you don't want everyone in your organization to have access to all of your data and you want the ability to lock down access by user groups as well as provide column level access to your data. Well, in August 2019, lake formation became generally available to do just this. It makes it easy to build and manage data lakes by becoming a single place to register Amazon S3 buckets and paths where your data lake will reside, orchestrate data flows that ingest, cleanse, transform, and organize the raw data, create and manage a data catalog containing metadata about your data sources and data in the data lake, and also define granular data access policies to metadata and data through a grant slash revoke permission model. There's no cost to use lake formation directly, but under the hood, it will trigger a lot of these services we've mentioned in this architecture to build your data lake and will charge you based on your usage of those services. So I hope you found this video helpful for understanding what services go into building a serverless data lake in AWS. If you think I missed an AWS service worth mentioning, please leave me a comment below. Thanks so much for watching and please consider subscribing if you want to continue learning about building data platforms on AWS with me, as well as other data engineering topics. If you want to learn more about AWS Glue Studio, check out my AWS Glue Studio tutorial playlist in the description below to learn how to build data pipelines with little or no code. See you next time.